Finally, it's here. Total War Three Kingdoms. And I'm excited because uh, I've, well, I mean, I've been playing this game ever since it came out just to kind of dive into it and figure out uh, what works, what doesn't work, and uh, how it works. So let's check it out right now. This is the main menu that we got up here. So let's go into what I want to cover first is the battle modes. So we're going to check out battle. And in battle modes, we have the return of a are an awesome feature historical battles that's right they are back and they are beast so let's check them out right now click on historical battles we have the battle of Xinyang battle of Jiondong Xiaopi Red Cliffs Changban and Jing province so this will pretty much cover uh, just about all of some of the large not all but some of the largest battles within the three kingdoms era and bef just before that towards the uh, the fall the collapse if you will of the Han dynasty starting off at 190 AD all the way up into 219 AD custom battle of course who can forget custom battles from Total War oh my god everyone who has played the Total War series has always enjoyed the custom battles oh just for the scope of it you have your maps right here and you can pretty much choose anywhere on the campaign map of China. Now, with that done, we're going to go into campaign. So you have all of your warlords here, the main coalition that is, the coalition against Dong Zhuo. And Dong Zhuo was the chancellor slash prime minister during the later years of the Han Dynasty. And he basically put an emperor on the throne, a younger emperor, uh, in as opposed to the older brother. So he put the younger emperor on the throne to manipulate him and to get all of uh, his you know, deeds done, per se. So Dong Zhuo, power monger and a tyrant. In fact, let's go straight to Dong Zhuo within the campaign. So let's check out Dong Zhuo on the campaign map. All right, so he starts off with the main territories here in the green. His enemies will be in red. And he immediately has the Han Empire, the Han armies, if you will, vassalized. Now, what does that mean? That means that they are a puppet nation of him. And of course, you have all of your empty territories here, up top, and the bottom as well, down here, down here, near, of course, the Nanman territory, as we're all familiar with. It's probably a loose name for them. <clears throat> now, why does he have the Han Dynasty, or the Han Imperial Forces, that is vassalized? That's because he has direct control over the Emperor himself. Like I mentioned just earlier, he has the Han Emperor as a puppet. That means he can do whatever he wants, basically, within the Han Empire. But the downside to that is that everyone hates his guts. And that's because he uh, is a cruel tyrant. Let's go back out real quick. Let's go back to the coalition. We have, of course, Cao Cao, the strategic mastermind. And he's pretty easy starting off in the campaign. Not too much to worry about around him besides Han Imperial forces. And, of course, depending on the difficulty level that you do play on, uh, that will play into how difficult, of course, it is for you, especially starting off. Now we have Liu Bei, who can forget Liu Bei, the oath in the Peach Garden, as it was, Guan Yu, uh, I believe it's, yeah, Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, his two other brothers, not uh, by blood, that is, but by oath. He's a virtuous, uh, virtuous, virtuous idealist. There we go, we finally got it out. Liu Bei is actually an uncle of the current uh, imperial family of China in this game and within history as well. Um, probably loosely related through a bloodline. I'm pretty sure he's not a direct uncle. His starting situation is uh, quite difficult actually. He starts off with no power base, a bit of a small army. He does have the support of Zhang Fei and Guan Yu though, so that's good. Sun Jian, the Tiger of Jiandong. His starting situation is actually a little trickier, in my opinion, from what I've seen from the beginning of the campaign. I haven't go, uh, gone ahead and flushed out everything within his campaign yet. Uh, still on the way to delivering that. So all I will say is his situation is a bit trickier. And we have Gong Sun San. Pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that. I think it's Gong Suan San. I think so. Uh, the Iron Fist General of the North, the Northeast to be specific, starts off right next to his brother, Gong Sun Du. His uh, starting situation is 
relatively easy actually from what I found it's pretty easy to go ahead and just defeat the Han forces immediately surrounding you and then go ahead and take territory if you will around your immediate territory and who can forget Yuan Shao the preeminent commander this guy had a hand in Dong Zhuo coming <laughs> to power uh, historically speaking and it's a bit ironic because he ends up forming a coalition against him his starting situation not that bad it's also fairly easy I'd say normal De again depending on the difficulty level if you do play on normal it's it's pretty balanced I think difficulty wise Yuan Shu his brother the power monger ambitious power monger his starting situation I wouldn't say very hard it's just uh, maybe hard is more accurate but he is sandwiched in between two powerful warlords Liu Biao again you have Cao Cao to his east and then you have Dong Zhuo to his north the massive force we have the governors of course Kong Rong Liu Biao Ma Tang now we'll go into the outlaws Zhang Yan and Zheng Jiang now Jin, Zheng Jiang is a very interesting character I love playing as her because she just has this badass attitude about her you know she's this uh, ruffian, this pirate, if you will, with her own force. Her situation is quite tricky to start off with. You start off with no territory at all. You're on the run from the Han forces, smashed in between the Han Empire and Dong Zhuo. Now the tyrant, we cover Dong Zhuo, of course. We have the Yellow Turban Rebellion, Her Yi, Gongdu, and Huang Shao. Now Huang Shao starts off in the northeast, I believe, right northeast of Cao Cao, or directly north of Chen, his power base. Her Yi, a leader of the people, his situation uh, is that he's stuck in between Liu Biao, Cao Cao to his north, and other various warlords to his southeast and southwest. So let's dive into it, Cao Cao right here. Again, I've dubbed, uh, or I've selected the Chinese dub over for the voices, but there will be subtitles when the voices are, uh, sorry, I just touched the microphone, when the voices are live. So don't worry about being confused if you need to translate or whatnot. I just felt like it was uh, it was more accurate, you know, to the time period to go ahead and just put the Chinese in there, and it's kind of cool, nice and immersive. Cao Cao watches dynasties fall and tyrants rise. He has seen power slip into the hands of the undeserving, and through the chaos, plots a path back to order by his hand. Pretty accurate, actually, historically speaking, for Cao Cao. So here is the campaign map. We're gonna go ahead and turn it so that the compass faces north. Thank you, there we go. <clears throat> now, my camera, or my screen of my face is actually blocking uh, your smaller campaign map down here, the quick map, that's just what I call it. Uh, but it will be on your lower right hand side. And you'll have a few other buttons as well to go ahead and help you, assist you with statistics on the game or uh, actions. Now you will have uh, missions within this campaign as well. Here's mine to begin with for Cao Cao. Pursued by Dong Zhuo's men, Cao Cao prepares to fight. The reason why Dong Zhuo's forces are chasing Cao Cao is because he attempted to assassinate Dong Zhuo. And you have all of your information here again. Your resources, your food, fruit production from farming and whatnot, livestock farms if you have any. Harvest, 190 AD, turn one. And you have your treasury showing about a 660, yeah, 662, man, I need glasses, 662 um, plus. And we have ooh, 1,000 army upkeep, that's expensive. And you have 475 uh, upkeep for your generals. Now let's go ahead and dive into the map finally. And I love how they did the landscape in China. We'll go into our larger settlement the large town, I believe, or town of Chen. Now that will be Cao Cao's power base. That's his first settlement that he owns. And I have one general at my disposal known as, and I think you all know him from either playing Dynasty Warriors or Dynasty Warriors Empires, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, or from studying the actual, uh, actual history, Sha Huo Dan. This guy caught an arrow in the eye and then took it out again debatable <laughs> you have your army here 
Now, the way that they've organized armies has changed. Um, it's based upon retinues now. Now, what is the retinue? It's a group of soldiers that each general will hire, general will hire into his service. Kind of like a feudal, um, feudal-ish way of doing things, I think. Going to our settlement here, Chen, the commandery. Now, each province or commandery is the area of, uh, or the section of your empire, per se, for lack of better terms. Go back down to our campaign map. Now you see we have some construction options available. All of these will serve different purposes. Uh, you can upgrade them as well as your settlement gets larger. I think what we need right now is we need a conscription office. That way we can go ahead and recruit more of the populace. However, when, when you do build a conscription office, you will notice that you'll have minus 4,000 population growth. That's because it's pulling from the local populace, the peasantry. So always remember to watch your population uh, drop or increase carefully. You always want to make sure that you manage your resources accordingly. And as you see, we have two more smaller settlements under the uh, control of the province of Chen. We have a livestock farm and a farmland. Now I think I'm going to need that farmland because I need as much food as possible to stock up to build a larger army. That way we can protect ourselves from uh, either the yellow turbans or from either various warlords around us, Dong Zhuo, of course, and his vassalized Han Empire, Han Empire that you see around us. We do have Liu Dai to the north, Liu Bei will be off here, and Sun Qian will be off in the southwest. Okay, now let's get some fighting in. Finally, less talking, more fighting. Now we have one army of the Han Empire under Yuan Huan. And we're going to go ahead and take care of him. Now he has 530 troops deployed under his uh, command. He has some swordsmen, he's got some bowmen, archers. We have 1562, so I'm pretty sure this will be an easy win. Also, I love how they made the commanders, uh, how they, they now have the commanders talking in the loading screen and talking smack to each other on the battlefield. It just feels a bit more real. Uh, it, feels more entertaining as well. It doesn't feel like a dull, you know, they're just sitting there in their horses and staring at each other from afar. It feels like a battle. It feel, feel the tension, you know. Alright, now there will be more UI. I've just opted out of most of the UI. Uh, the indicators, of course. The cards are still there. They're always going to be there. I just want a bit of a realer feel to it. And they have added in something called duel modes. Now what is a duel? Duel is a bout or a fight between two persons. And uh, what's pretty awesome about this is, be, is that the generals will duel each other. That's right, they will call each other out on the battlefield. You can also do this manually. Sometimes the enemy generals will simply just call you out, you know. Alright, so here's the units, here's what they look like, and here's the animations. I love the way that they did the flags, they actually kept to the way that Chinese, or Han Chinese armies would march into battle with many of these flags to support morale or indicate what region they're from, or what warlord they were serving. Alright, let's view Sao Tsao right now, marching with the troops. There he is, the big baddie himself, the strategic mastermind. And we have Sha Huodun, which will be next to the cavalry there. And as you double click on your character, it'll bring you straight to them. It's a nice little feature that Total War has had for quite some time. Now let's view the cavalry. We have some light cavalry, mounted saber militia. And we have 60 heavy tiger and leopard cavalry. And I'm gonna I'm going to um, cover the units, uh, their names, specifications in later videos. So not to worry if any of this seems a bit unfamiliar to some of you uh, who are new to Total War or simply just new to this game in general. Now let's march our troops up. It seems like they know what my plan is. Now let's go ahead and go back to our army. Let's get a closer look at the spearmen. The spearmen have larger shields obviously good against missiles and melee protection 
Now, these smaller shields are for the Saber Militia. We're gonna have our archers finish off their archer militia before the cavalry charge in from the rear. And we're gonna have our spearmen start on their approach. Now, you do have several other, several other options available to you down here. Such as, you can pause the game for all of you newbies out there who are new to Total War. No shame in it. If you're new to a game, great. You got the game, enjoy the game. Of course, you have your information on the battle to your bottom left, and the mini-map will be in the bottom right. You can't see that, or maybe you can. It's partially or completely blocked by my um, my face right now. Press, press play. You can also speed up the battle as well. We're not going to do that, though. It's unnecessary. All right, so we're facing some casualties from their archers right now. However, they are sustaining much more casualties than I am. Uh, obviously because I have more archers. I also took off the trails for the missiles, the uh, arrows, just because it, it didn't feel immersive enough. I, you know, obviously you, you can't see trails be, uh, behind missiles. Alright, let's go ahead and check out our saber infantry. Now we're gonna keep these guys in reserve. We don't really need to use them right now. And we're gonna take our cavalry and wheel them around to this hill section here. They're still out of their line of sight, the Han Imperial Unit's line of sight. That means that they cannot see them, thank God, because they, otherwise it wouldn't be a surprise. Oh, here we go, so they've begun charging. They've begun charging, the archers are starting to take them down one by one. We're gonna go ahead and pause the game real quick. We're gonna have our spearmen begin a bit of a run. And we're gonna have our cavalry pe prepare to charge in from this hill here. They won't know what hit them. Let's press play right now. Very good, let's get our... No, 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 don't withdraw, don't withdraw, come back. There we go. Sorry, I know you missed the smashing of the two uh, infantry units in together, but we're gonna cover it right now. So let's look at the animations. It doesn't look too bad. I have heard of some issues with the AI. I've also seen some issues with the animations um, for certain units. Uh, hopefully they will fix that in due time. Hopefully soon. All right, so our cavalry are in position. Let's go ahead and pause that. Let's send in our shock cavalry to their right flank and to their left flank, the light cavalry. Shock will done. We'll go ahead and attack their left to try and smash it. And we're just gonna go ahead and send in the rest of the infantry. All right, so we just sent in our saber militia. We're gonna go ahead and pause on the arrows because we don't want to kill our own guys, obviously. That would be unfortunate. Alright, so we have the Saber Militia giving it a go. They're charging up right now. Archers are taking the rear. The Spear Guards are looking pretty good. Uh, obviously, you know, a Spear can outrange um, a sword in terms of melee strike in some instances. Sao Sao has emerged victorious from the duel. There we go. That's what I want to see. Alright, let's get Sao Sao in there. Let's go ahead and send him off. Oh, and we won. Excellent. So we just won this battle. Uh, after every win or every victory, uh, you will have several options available to you on how to manage your captured opponents or how to manage a settlement if you have captured uh, or decided to destroy it. it. Looks like we're gonna go ahead and try and finish off more of these Han troops. Cavalry chasing them down along with the Saber Militia. And they have pretty much been eviscerated, so we're gonna go ahead and click out. We will claim victory. Look at that. Shahul done right there. That is awesome. I like the way that they did the units. They actually kept uh, a lot of the units um, looking to how they would look historically to some extent. Now, we have several options here. We can either ransom them for money, but we'll get 113 income. Not a lot. Plus 8 military supplies. That sounds pretty good right now. Or plus 4% plus four replenishment. And I think we will go with recruits. I would like the new, or uh, I would like more troops. 
There we go. So we finish them off. Haha. Done with. Yuan Huan, you will no longer be a pain in my back. Go ahead and zoom out. So we just took out the enemy army. I think what we will do now is we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and chill back in Chin. And in the first uh, turn of your campaign, you cannot raise a recruit. Uh, you cannot raise new armies or recruit new soldiers yet. You can construct buildings though or upgrade them, which is nice. Now let's just before we end the video, let's quickly gloss over your options up at the top left you see here so next to your statistics or small statistics here on your top left you'll notice you have a noble that will be your character and this is his or her ranking amongst the world prestige if you will once you re reach emperor it'll cancel all alliances with other emperors or um, it'll lower your relations with certain factions that either support the Han or do not support the Han and simply do not support you. You'll have your court. Your court will be your family members, your supporters, or your faction um, heir, for example, prime ministers. Obviously, this will be all of that will be unlocked as well once you reach uh, once you reach a higher rank. And let's go into diplomacy. Diplomacy, you see here, will be uh, your relations with either your enemies. Uh, alliance members, coalition members, vassals, etc. Neutral players. And you can also go ahead and scroll through or press through uh, different map modes, which is nice. Wealth, population, public order, food. And you'll see this little tree here. Now what is that little tree? This essentially is your technology. And in the way that they've done it in this game is they've named it uh, Reforms essentially technology you know just for all you total war players out there who have played total war games before you cannot engage in espionage until you unlock spy slots for your faction okay so obviously we're of lower rank so we cannot unlock spies until a higher rank but essentially this is your espionage button the records this will be all the history of your campaign play and the faction council Faction council button right here. Uh, it'll be you needing or asking for counsel from your council members, like your prime minister, for example, example your minister of war and whatnot. All right, so I think that covers just about everything for now. I know I was really fast. We're gonna go ahead and cover more later once we have time. I've been busy all day running a, uh, running around and doing errands, and I have work very soon coming up, very very soon. So we have to go ahead and get ready for that. But it's a pleasure doing this video. We're going to go ahead and dive more into South Cell's campaign. Thanks for watching the video. If you did like the comment, uh, if you did like the content, comment, like, and subscribe. If I can do anything better for the videos, go ahead and let me know. Uh, if I'm doing anything awesome in the videos, you don't have to let me know. Let me know if you want to. Um, if you do want to see different videos of different games uh, in particular, go ahead and just comment in the comment section. I'm pretty much running this channel out of my own pocket so I, I don't expect you guys you know to donate anything uh, I want to try and get this built first and then we can go ahead and get to the next step well thanks very much mahalo